Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kunja 
गोपी जना लाभा गोपी जना लाभा सदनंदना ब्रज जनरंजना सदनंदना ब्रज जनरंजना मुन थी रामना चाफ्टर एफ्टर जामुन थीरा चाध माधव कुंज बिहारे जाय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे गोपी जना भागिरी वृधे गोपी जना भागिरी वृधे जा ब्रज जन रंजना जा ब्रज जन रंजना जा मुना चारे जामुन तेरा जा राध माधव कुंज बिहारे जा राध माधव कुंज बिहारे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mithai Gaur Hari Bal Hari Bal Hari Bal Mithai Gaur Hari Bal Mithai Gaur Hari Bal Hari Bal Hari Bal Mithai Gaur Hari Bal Srila Prabhupada ki, Sisi Kishor Kishori ki, Samira Bhakta Vrinda ki, Sai Gorpe Manandi. Okay. Golok, what time does RT start? Six o'clock. I've got the wrong schedule. I've got that I'm supposed to go from five to six thirty, and it was supposed to be four thirty to six. Sorry. Somebody sent me the wrong schedule. They won't tell you their name, but I'll talk to them. Okay. Well, the topic that will be shorter than was planned is preparing for the 32 round day tomorrow. Those of you that give garlands, it's, it's a little difficult right in the middle of Kirtan to receive a garland, so if you can do it before or after, that's best. So preparing for the 32 round day, that's our topic. And what I would like to do is, along with the other discussions earlier today, give you some tools or some supports or some sound vibrations to take shelter of to help you not just complete 32 rounds, but do so with absorption. And if you can chant more than 32 rounds, fantastic. And if you can chant less than 32 rounds, that's also fine. But that's our, that's our target for tomorrow. 32 round day. We're all accustomed by our training, conditioning, materially competitive spirit kind of kartaham iti manyate way of doing things, that we, we like having a challenge in front of us and meeting the challenge and do it. Just do it, right? Just do it. 
when, it, when um, during the counterculture era, it was, if it feels good, do it. Now it's just do it. <laughs> it's taken for granted you're doing it because it feels good. Just do it. So we're, we're accustomed to that culture. And the spiritual culture is, is different. Certainly we have to have some goal, but not... The, 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 the rules are different. The rules aren't just do it. Um, the, the, the soul, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Bhai Bhakti Lata Bij. The soul is in a long sojourn, birth after birth after birth. Many, 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 many. Too many. Repeated births and deaths, and by special mercy, some causeless mercy of Guru and Krishna, here we are in devotional service. And now, 32 round day is, is an op opportunity, it's a designed opportunity to go further on that trajectory toward Krishna and go further away from the conditioning influences of our material existence. So I want to speak on, for starters, five points that are... Um, you may find helpful. <coughs> Taking shelter, if you remember from the, um, those nine keys we spoke about last Festival of the Holy Name, nine keys and chanting. The final one is taking shelter. So in, in terms of goals or shelters, I'm going to discuss, there isn't some other shelter, ultimately. Um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes, or it's described in Chaitanya Bhagwat, that when he received initiation from Ishwara Puri, uh, after his initiation, he heard lecture on one verse, Brihan Naradiya Purana, for seven days, one verse. And it's a very simple verse. Harer Nama, Harer Nama, Harer Nama Eva Kevalam. Kalo nastyeva, nastyeva, nastyeva gatiranyata for seven days. That may seem like even the verse sounds a little redundant. Harer nama, harer nama, harer nama, eva kevalam. Kalo nastyeva, nastyeva. How do you get one week out of that verse? But Bhakti, Vinod, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, to illustrate by his own example that every verse of the Bhagavatam has unlimited meanings. One time he was in Dhaka and for 30 days straight he spoke on one verse from the Bhagavatam, the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, and didn't repeat himself. Hare Nama, Hare Nama. It was... Um, Later portions of his lectures were published in The Harmonist, but he's a brilliant orator. And Ishwara Puri, prior to instructing Lord Chaitanya in the glories of the chanting of the Holy Name, the singular importance of chanting the Holy Name, he um, had written a book on the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. And he requested Nimai Pandit to um, grammatically review the literature as he would recite it. If there were grammatical mistakes, correct them or bring them to his attention. Because he was a renowned grammarian. So it's not that Sri Ishwara Puri was illiterate or something like that, was, was an incapable person. 
a fully capable person. But his, uh, um, his instruction to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was simply chant the holy name. And the repetition three times means different things. In Sanskrit, there's a rule. As with common sense, but in Sanskrit, it's a rule. If you say something three times, it's for emphasis. In Sanskrit, it's absolute emphasis. Like you might say to a child, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> if you say don't touch it, they've got to touch it because it's, it, there must be something really special about touching it if you're saying don't touch it. So, absolute emphasis. And nasjeva, 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 Aracharyas describe it. It indicates that there are other processes that are recommended in other ages. Yuga dharmas, but without the chanting of the holy name, they are not going to deliver perfection, although they're appropriate dharmas for other ages. And this kalo, in this age of kali, there's but one, the chanting of the holy name. We're spiritual aspirants. We wouldn't be here if we had some other agenda you'd be off doing other things like other people are doing we're here because that's, that's a an understood purpose of life um, but the understood purpose of life to be achieved means as we discussed this pan scale thing letting go of some other things in Prahlad Maharaj's discussion with his father Hiranyakashipu he states, Nate vidu svartakatim hi Vishnu, Dorashaya ye bahir arta maninas. Bahir arta maninas. Maninas means in the mind, one considers bahir arta. The things that are desirable are bahir. There's something outside, you just have to get your paws on something outside and bring it over here and then that's the goal of life and for those who think that way they will never understand the goal of life they've got something else in, that they're chasing or holding on to as the conception of, of, of the goal and it doesn't fit something this other than sense gratification doesn't fit. If it, if it helps my sense gratification, great. If it doesn't help my sense gratification, I, I don't have time. So just as the materialist says, I don't have time. And Prabhupada writes in Ishupanishad, it's true. The external energy is engaged them so much, they don't have time. When they say they don't have time, they're busy up to here. They don't have time. But when you take shelter of the internal energy, there's time. But you don't have time for the, the external energy. You don't, there's no time for it. Sometimes I've asked students that are practicing Krishna consciousness very diligently, uh, how do you do it? Because they're, you know, students that are really intensely absorbed, a certain group of students I'm familiar with, they're, they have regulated program, four o'clock every morning, Mangal Arti. Four o'clock every morning, Mangal Arti, and then six o'clock, Guru Puja and class, and 6.45, breakfast, and off they go into the office. For their, these are graduate students. And then they come back home, and evening Gora Arti, and evening class, and 16 rounds every day and 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 my question to them is when I recall this is even undergraduate study I don't know if I could have done it where do you, where do you find the time and their answer is we're always wasting time <laughs> it's just the external energy keeps us very busy 
and the internal energy, when you take shelter of Krishna, the internal energy expands and time works in a different way. But there isn't time for the external energy. That's what we say. And we, we, besides, we say we're not interested. They also say we're not interested, but they also say we don't have time. And it's true, they're so busy. Busy, 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 no time. So for, for spiritual development, for getting, we're taking the time. We're taking the time for uh, tomorrow morning, 32 round day, and for coming together and experiencing, not just hear different virtuosos sing very nicely, but focus our attention in general on the holy name of the Lord as our only means of deliverance, that exclusive shelter is the message here. Second point is something that Jiva Goswami describes in his Bhakti Sandarbha. The Jiva Goswami is the, both the nephew of Rupa Goswami and literally the student of Rupa Goswami. Jiva Goswami was, was studying under Rupa Goswami and Rupa Goswami wrote Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which we know as Nectar Devotion. And in Nectar Devotion, we read that there are nine processes of bhakti, just as it's found in Srimad Bhagavatam. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, and so forth, the nine processes of bhakti. And according to Rupa Goswami, one can achieve perfection if one does any one of these perfectly. So each of the nine stages has somebody, a name assigned, who achieved perfection. Shukadeva Goswami by speaking, Maharaj Prichit by hearing, Prahlad Maharaj by remembering, and so forth, each of the nine processes. Someone achieved perfection. As the student of Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami writes in his Bhakti Sandarbha, while that is true, they must also be combined with chanting of the holy name. And gives various scriptural references and examples and logical arguments and concludes, whatever it is that you like to do, somebody may like deity worship, archanam, somebody may like prayer. Prayer is a universally popular core part of any religious practice, any religious tradition. The chanting of the holy name, his Bhakti Sandarbha argument is, it must be combined with these other activities in order for, in this age of Kali, for them to achieve, bring one to the point of spiritual perfection. Just like in Dwarpa Yuga, deity worship was the process. This age, we engage in deity worship, but it's joined with the chanting process before the, the, before the deities are worshipped each morning. There's Mangalarti and we have Kirtan. And then the deities are worshipped and the curtain opens and we have Kirtan. And then there's an offering and we have Kirtan and Kirtan and chanting. So, singular importance in the chanting of Krishna's holy name. The third point is when um, Srila Prabhupada engaged his students, his disciples in process of Krishna consciousness, um, he engaged us in various important ways of um, practicing devotional service, but the main requirement that he requested of his initiated disciples was to chant daily 16 rounds. and follow the regular principles. In Nectar of Devotion, there's 64 items that are listed that are very powerful, recommended activities for achieving the goal of devotional service, perfection of devotional service. Of those 
64.5 are most important. And among those five is chanting of the holy name. So now we'll go down to two and then we'll go down to one. Out of those five, uh, there's a nice discussion between Lord Chaitanya and uh, Satyaraj Khan from Kalinagram, where Satyaraj Khan says the devotees are going back after the spending four months with Lord Chaitanya in Puri. So by different groups he would meet with them and Satyaraj Khan on behalf of his group said I'm an attached householder and I do not know what is the goal of life. Can you tell me what are my duties to achieve the goal of life? And Lord Chaitanya gave his reply two things. As far as possible, always chant the holy name of the Lord. Kirtaniya Sadahari. Always. Maybe not in your workplace. But as much as you can, always chant the holy name of the Lord. And the other was, serve the devotees of the Lord. Um, there was a god brother. Bhakti Vinod, do you know Ushik? behind you. No. Ushik, remember Ushik? Ushik Prabhu who later became Ushik Swami and his practice of even in the middle of having a conversation with you, like in the middle of a sentence he'd stop and chant the Maha Mantra. Hey Bhakti Vinod, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And then, you know, it's time for prasadam, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Like that. He was just, he took it literally, Kirtaniya, Sada, Hari. And my understanding was he was walking along the street in San Francisco one day with his hand in his bead bag and chanting Krishna's holy name like he always did, and he gave up his body. Guess what happens when you do that? He was practicing for that stage of his life. Always chanting Krishna's holy name. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. So, then Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya narrowed it down to one. He asked Lord Chaitanya of all the different, Bennett, so many beneficial things described in the scriptures that are good, recommended for a soul to do for elevation. Is there one thing that's most important? And the answer is yes. Chanting of the holy name. Singularly important. When, not just tomorrow, when you're, certainly tomorrow, but whenever it is your daily practice of chanting, I'm referring specifically to japa. It's the most important part of your day. It's the most important part of your life because it's direct communion with Krishna in the form where he reveals himself in this age. He his, as we discussed earlier, in his fullness, Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya gave us the means to directly, according to this age, associate with Krishna. Who can claim? I just, Krishna is with me all the time. I just call him and there he is. But that's actually what's happening. It's so uniquely special. And not only the holy name is the primary means for deliverance for this age, but the person who's giving it, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in giving it, he is giving that which no other incarnation ever even offered before. Love for Krishna in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan. Braja Prem, please take it. I'm sorry, I have no time. Maybe later. So if, if we 
recognize, repeating a point from earlier, but if we recognize how valuable is this gift, we'll regard it in a very unique way. And that's something that can en enhance the, the quality of your chanting or your absorption in chanting. When chanting, there should be, ideally, nothing else going on. Here's a, here's a very practical tip. Here's, here's option A and option B. Option A, multiprocessing option. I'm chanting, and we're used to multiprocessing. While chanting, I'm planning out my day. I'm, you know, I'm thinking about something I should have done yesterday, worrying about something I have to do tomorrow, anything but being present. Hare Krishna. So Hare Krishna mantra is in the background and we're multiprocessing. And so A is how effective are those plans going to be? What to speak of how effective is your chanting going to be? Versus plan B or option B. You just absorb yourself in the chanting of Krishna's holy name with maximum effort and maximum attention and your mind doesn't go anywhere else. And then, when you're done, you then focus on the tasks at hand. And whatever homework assignment or job assignment or things that you have to get done, you make a, a clear plan and execute the plan. Which is going to be more effective? B. But we don't do it. At least, we don't do it sufficiently. And so, emphasis, bringing the mind to that position, is um, a very, very, very important element in giving exclusive shelter to Krishna's holy name. Um, I'm going to make one more reference on this point, and that is, um, in Krishna's instructions to Arjuna, Uddhava, excuse me, to Uddhava in Uddhava Gita. It's chapter 23 of Canto 11. He is describing um, excuse me, chapter 20 of chapter 11. He is describing the stages of consciousness through Karma Yoga, Dhyan Yoga, and then into the realm of Bhakti Yoga. He's speaking about mixed, and then he goes to unmixed. I'll read just one verse prior about the mixed. If a yogi, because of some momentary inattention, accidentally commits an abominable activity, then by the very practice of yoga, he should burn to ashes the sinful reaction without any time without at any time employing any other procedure. That's where there's mixed, by other processes of yoga. It is firmly declared that the steady adherence of transcendentalists to their respective spiritual positions constitutes real piety and that sin occurs when a transcendentalist neglects his prescribed duty. One who adopts this standard of piety and sin, sincerely desiring to give up all past association with sense gratification, is able to subdue materialistic activities which are by nature impure. And then he moves to pure. Having thus awakened faith in the narrations of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment, my devotee should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activities. Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks of this as a 
form of purification for a Vaishnav, tapa for a Vaishnav, regret for one's lingering tendencies and being not sufficiently strong in conviction because the potency of the internal energy is certainly strong enough to carry us beyond weaknesses. But our commitment and conviction isn't sufficiently strong commonly in beginning stages, earlier stages of, of bhakti. So regretting that circumstance, but continuing with commitment to the process. This is what Krishna is recommending here to Uddhava. Firmly faithful. The key component he's emphasizing is having faith in the process. It will carry me beyond my weaknesses. And who can say they don't have weaknesses? When an intelligent person engages constantly in worshipping me through loving devotional service as described by me, his heart becomes firmly situated in me. Thus, all material desires within the heart are destroyed. Nashtaprayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya then the knot in the heart is pierced. All misgivings are cut to pieces and the chain of fruitive actions is terminated when I am seen as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's very similar to a verse in First Canto chapter 2. Hridaya grantis chindanti kovidas tasya the Translation is the knot of the internet. That's the what connects the soul to matter. It's false ego. This process of hearing and chanting that very difficult to let go of false ego is cut. And the chain of fruitive activities is then similarly cut. Because it's the false ego of identifying ourself as Purusha, the enjoyer of matter, when we're in fact enjoyed by Krishna, to be enjoyed by Krishna. And I just want to read the last paragraph here. It's, 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 it's nice. It's a relief. Advanced devotional service automatically awards one liberation from material bondage as confirmed by Lord Kapila gives the Sanskrit bhakti devotional service dissolves the subtle body of the living entity without separate effort just as fire in the stomach digests all that we eat it's like an Alka-Seltzer commercial or something your mind dissolves by the process of bhakti the material mind because the material mind <clears throat> is just a, a reflection of these two root desires that we were speaking about in the morning lust or uh, desire for independent enjoyment from Krishna and envy of Krishna raga and dvesha so where those primordial desires reside is in the mind. And when the process of devotional service is engaged in with determination, enthusiasm, tivra bhakti, the material mind dissolves. The whole battle is over. Yay! And behind the material mind is the spiritual mind. And that spiritual mind says, I'm going to Krishna. Even if the material mind says, wait a minute, I, I like my independence. I, I want to enjoy independently. Devotional service alone, Kapila Dave explains, has that potency. Other process, say it the other way. Other processes of bhakti don't have that potency. 
the processes of yoga, don't have that potency. Only the process of bhakti dissolves the material mind, leaving the, the spiritual mind and spiritual intelligence and the soul calling out for Krishna. Srila Prabhupada states in his purport to this verse, quote, a devotee does not have to try separately to attain liberation. That very service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the process of liberation because to engage oneself in the service of the Lord is to liberate oneself from material entanglement. Sri Bilva Mangala Thakur explained this position very nicely. He said, if I had unflinching devotion unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, then mukti, or liberation, serves me as my maid servant. Mukti, the maid servant, is always ready to do whatever I ask. For devotee, liberation is no problem at all. Liberation takes place without separate endeavor. Bilvamangala Thakur. So the, the, the struggle, mamamaya duratyaya, the very difficult struggle of material energy, which may happen when you're chanting, the relief it comes when you just take shelter of the holy name and it, persevere, continue to strive like that. And Krishna's there as his holy name and he reciprocates. His reciprocation may not be as, as we're expecting it should be, or stamping our little foot saying, how come you're not doing it my way? But continue in that relationship with Krishna, chanting and hearing his holy name, and there is no other process. This is, this is the emphasis here. There isn't some other process that can achieve this, this devotional service. And our entrance into the realm of devotional service is through chanting. go back to the exercise in the morning. How is that going to help you in your chanting of 32 rounds tomorrow? Supposing you didn't sleep well at night or supposing something, you're, you're, you're tired or you're disturbed by some bad news or a, a pain or something, something. There's always something long list of some things. So you're, you're disturbed and you're trying to chant. What do you do? How will this, what, what has just been described, help you? How to apply it practically? Well, <clears throat> we'll go to those nine keys and we'll hold up the first one first and that is the one mantra at a time key now from feedback from the, the last festival of the holy name and other places where I've been where those nine keys have been presented it's very helpful people describe it, it, it carries them through the, the whole of the Japa retreat or tomorrow 32 rounds it's because it's very powerful we're, 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 not, we're not accustomed to being in the moment. We're accustomed to being in passion or in ignorance, either worrying about the future or lamenting over the past. We're accustomed to that. We're very familiar with that territory. But being in the moment, we're not so f accustomed to. But one mantra at a time is another way of saying be in the moment. It's a popular phrase these days. There are books with that title, with that kind of theme. It's even outside of the Vaishnava tradition. It's a, <laughs> it's a spiritual principle. Or spiritual-minded people think of things in this way. Remember a, a very popular book when, some years ago when we were 
young and beginning Krishna consciousness. Be here now. Remember that one? Mystical, be here now. And that was an impersonalist. But if we can be with Krishna now, then we're with Krishna. And the next moment or the next mantra, be with Krishna and be with Krishna. And what happens if you practice being with Krishna? You're with Krishna. And the other attractions become distractions and you let them go and you're, you're, you're giving attention to Krishna. Of the ten offenses against the holy name, this one is also listed, the way that it's described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. It's listed in Hari Bhakti Vilas. To be inattentive while chanting is the root of all of the other offenses against chanting. So conquer this one. Just be attentive to, to chanting, ch- ch- attentive to Krishna's name. And you can't be attentive to the one that you chanted before, the one you didn't chant yet. But you can be attentive to the one that you're chanting now. Be attentive to the one you're chanting now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then, however well you did, then you chant the next one. Don't lament or... Or take pride in, oh, I chanted that last mantra really nicely. Business is over. Although Prabhupada said to one devotee, if you can chant the, the Krishna's name once with full attention, once with full attention, that's sufficient for going back to Godhead. And then he went on to say, when you chant 16 rounds, you have 25 25, is this right? 25,000 opportunities every time you chant 16 rounds. Is that right? Because 64 rounds is 1 lakh, so 16 rounds is 25,000 chances. We're not very good chanters because 25,000 times, however many times you've chanted 16 rounds. But like Prabhupada said in, in Nairobi, it may take many lifetimes. And if, 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 if that's the price to pay, pay it. Practice. Being attentive to even one, and, and try it. <laughs> it's, it's powerful. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. There was someone sitting out on the bench by the, the door this morning, one of our guests that came from Mangalarti. And he was chanting slowly, but he was chanting very intensely. And at least it sounded like he was paying close attention to each word of the mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare. So practice like that, one, one mantra at a time. And then... You, you'll find that the mind is distracted, even just trying to do one mantra at a time. It sounds simple enough, but the mind is distracted. So, and then you bring the mind back, and you go through those keys, and you'll see very clearly where your attachments are, and you know, other than Krishna's holy name. That's where your mind goes, where your attachments are. And, and part of it is conditioning. I was with somebody recently and they're retired. And they've been, you know, they're very conscientious people. They've been working very hard and they were describing it's... Well, the, the question was, now that we've retired, what is our duty? We're vanaprastha. Our children are grown. Our children are married. They have their children. We're becoming attached to the grandchildren. What's our duty? And in the course of the discussion, it was very clear where the mind goes is to what they did for the past 30 years, for 12 hours a day. Work. And it's hard for the mind to do anything other than go the same path it's gone for 30 years. Because for 30 years, or most of those 30 years, working years, they weren't chanting. Towards the end, they started chanting. But I can imagine when they're chanting, what their mind is doing. It's, you know, 
the other 25 years worth of stuff. And they were saying, it's difficult. Okay, now that you're retired and it's difficult and you didn't start chanting when you were little boy and little girl, great fortune for those who have begun chanting when they're small and young in age and as parents taking care of children to help help them get a taste. It's one thing, get a taste for kirtan. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a giant step forward. But then having children get a taste for chanting japa. Whoa, that's a whole other thing. Right, parents? Whole other thing. Earlier this month in June, we did a japa retreat in Seattle and there were a lot of children, more children than are screaming outside the window there today. And it was in a state park and they were running around there having a great time, going in and going out. And it was, it was, the facility was great. They had a, a you know, volleyball net and, you know, the, the kids were having a great time. But their attraction for the chanting of the Holy Name, while the parents are trying to focus on the Holy Name, what's it like? If you're at home and you're a responsible parent and you're trying to create an atmosphere where your children will have an attraction for the Holy Name and they just want to play, they don't want to have an attraction for the Holy Name. And then expand that into the community and what happens in the community? You have the children that grow up from little children to teenagers and they don't have an attraction for the Holy Name. What's going to happen? It impacts on the community. And then keep going and keep going and, and then you have young adults and they don't have attraction for chanting the Holy So it community wise children are very important. I mean that's an obvious statement. But um, developing a culture within a community such that not force but make it inviting and somehow develop an, an attraction, a taste for activities of devotional service and the kirtan. Kids of all ages like kirtan. They especially like to dance and run around. But, you know, sitting and chanting japa. There are some children in this congregation who are we're blessed. I mean, little ones. And, you know, the middle ones and the bigger ones also. They have a taste for chanting. And that's a great credit to, to the parents of those children and to the community for helping to create that atmosphere that's conducive. But it's, um, it's, it's a really sensitive point for developing Krishna consciousness in a community. You can't do that, leave the kids behind. The kids have to come along with the community. And it's a core part of the responsibility of the parents and the community and the leaders of the community to inculcate that value. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge. But it's, it's the responsibility of leaders and parents and a community to, to create that, at least create the atmosphere where it's conducive and encourage in, in various ways, without going into the, the various, what those various ways are. Um, that's a big point. <laughs> so, but when, when the, the goal, the shelter in Krishna is the goal, that's these, these other things, back to the reference of these other things that we discussed from Uddhava Gita and Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. A whole culture of the Hare Krishna movement is to come to that stage where the exclusive shelter of Krishna is where our consciousness goes. So that when we're walking along the street in San Francisco one fine day and something happens or wherever, whatever our circumstance of life and the lights go out, where's our consciousness? It's going to happen one fine day for every one of us, without exception. And the, the culture of 
taking shelter of Krishna's holy name. That's, what we're, that's why we're doing this festival of the holy name, to, to cultivate that. Then, then you have no... When you gradually through that cultivation and letting go of other shelters and continuing to practice abhyasa and continuing to practice and continuing despite the setbacks and it doesn't happen and so forth and so on. Just continue. The mode of goodness emerges and the pursuit of purity becomes prominent. Even if I don't have the qualification, let me pursue that purity, this, the hope against hope that Rupa Goswami writes about in Nectar of Devotion or Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. This is my hope for purity. And as long as there is this impurity, I'm going to suffer. And with purity, automatically liberation is there. I don't need to strive for something other. Let me strive for purity, pure devotional service. Think of those thoughts tomorrow. One and try one mantra at a time. The six o'clock RT is coming around really quickly. So I want to give one or two other little tools. One of them is right over there, and we probably should have some other Maha Mantra signs put up. Maybe Premananda, someone can relay the message. She can figure out some some way of putting. There's one there. This, th- there's a system called Trataka. If you get to a point where your mind is just not focusing, stand in front of the mantra board or sheet or sign or hold one in your hand and let your eyes go from the, the words as you say the words. Um, Vira Bhadra, I believe his name is, the, the, one of the sons of Lord Nityananda. He had it etched in stone or like you know, chiseled in stone and chanted his japa in front of stone every day. Seeing the holy name and chanting the holy name, it helps to focus the mind on the holy name. I'll give you another little tool you might take off the shelf and use if you're having, if you're struggling. Try pronouncing the syllables clearly. And if you try to pronounce the syllables clearly, you have to listen. It's a trick to the mind. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So one emphasis is in hearing, but you're having trouble hearing the sound because your mind is wandering. Practice saying the sounds clearly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Slow down and speak the words, the syllables clearly. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. By speaking the words clearly, you're hearing. Because you have to hear in order to see whether you're you're monitoring how well you're, how clearly you're speaking. You just trick the mind, which wanted to wander, and now it's it's focused on, um, am I speaking the words clearly? Another is, stand by Tulsi Devi or sit by Tulsi Devi, because she's very merciful and she gives bhakti, just as Haridas Thakur had the prostitute who became his disciple. He asked her to give up her worldly things and sit before Tulsi, the same Tulsi he was sitting before and just chant the holy name. Or same as Narada gave instruction to Magari the hunter, Tulsi, and chanting the holy name. It's not, uh, it's an ancient thing. It's an ancient practice because Tulsi is very merciful. As we sing in our prayers when we worship Tulsi and circumambulate Tulsi. She's very merciful. She gives bhakti. So if our heart is dry, get some bhakti from Tulsi. And 
the deities, the deities will be open during, the, during our 32 round day and come before the deities and open your heart to the deities. I mean, they know already what's in our heart, but open your heart and pray to them for their mercy to help you have the strength. And, and Srila Prabhupada and all the devotees, universally, when there's a gathering of devotees chanting japa together, it's like jet propulsion. I'll just share this with, um, from our Japa retreat, it was in Seattle. Um, every year it's a different voice that says something very similar. This time it was somebody who said, I've never chanted more than three rounds a day. But I thought I would come to the Japa retreat and just see how it would go. I thought, it would be really nice, maybe I'll be able to chant 16 rounds while well, everybody else is chanting 64 rounds. But just in the company of the devotees, they, I just felt so surcharged, it was easy. I chanted 16 rounds and then 32 rounds and I thought, let me try for it. I'll chant another 16 rounds and before I knew it, I had completed 64 rounds. And his wife said, I just came along to be with my husband. I don't chant at all. But I thought, because my husband's going to chant, I'll chant. And 64 rounds. A little seven-year-old boy, 64 rounds. We have one of those in our congregation too, but he does it every year. This was the first time for this one. And his, his, um, his younger brother is, is six, and he only chanted 32. He felt, he said, next year I'm going to chant 64. It, it, the, the association of devotees is very powerful. So, one last thing. Anticipation. This is something not only for tomorrow, but something that you, you can do every day. Advice by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, specifically for every day. But if your mind is prepared, commonly, the, the experience and the teaching is, what, you, what your mind is absorbed in at night, it's what you think of in the morning when you wake. So Prabhupada recommended hearing Krishna book at night. So when you wake, you think of Krishna. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur recommends before you take rest at night, you consider, you do a little quick review, debriefing on how your day went, what went well, what didn't go well, how can I improve? And then finally, commitment to take shelter of the holy name, anticipation, Tomorrow morning I have another opportunity to associate with Krishna personally, directly, no intermediary, just Krishna. And with that anticipation, then tomorrow morning, 32 round day, anticipation, there's one of our congregation members that, um, I don't know if they're here right now, don't see them. There, there's, oh, your son. Is he here? He's, he's, he's playing somewhere. He's here? Where? I don't see. Anyway, rising, right? Rising very early in the morning, waking up. I got a, got a chant. Let's go to Mangalarti. Yes? And, what was the, how old was he when he first chanted 64 rounds? Six or seven years old. And, and anticipation, then when, he was all, when his 64 rounds were finished, he slept in your lap because he had hardly slept at night. Remember that first year? So in the association of devotees, take full advantage. You don't all have... We don't all have the opportunity to get together with so many persons that are all focused on one thing, the holy name. So, anticipation. And uh, last item. Please observe Mona Vrata tomorrow morning. Especially parents with children. If you have children that, you know, they, they're children, they like to talk. Find some other place for them. And, you know, 
If there's some practical thing you have to instruct to your children, fine, do that. But otherwise, conversation is not only minimal, it's, it's zero. For, for sure, from the time of the, the morning class. But best, when you come in the morning for Mangalarti, just chant japa, ten Mangalarti, Talsi Puja, chant japa, and Monavrata, right up and when you take prasada, Monavrata, and until we finish midday tomorrow, you'll find it will help your concentration. It will certainly help others in their concentration too. <laughs> so be kind to your fellow Vaishnav with observing that principle. Okay. My watch says it's six o'clock. And RT's at six o'clock, right? <laughs>